OK. So we have 5 p.m. Our live viewers have the opportunity to watch the innovation keynote in the live stream, or they can stick here with me. I've been joined by Chris and Stephanie, um, to he which are here to discuss AI on the Edge with Azure Stack Edge. So nice to have you here. Um, can you explain to me and our viewers what is Azure Stack Edge and why would we have a product like this? What, is it, what does it do? Absolutely, um, absolutely, thank you. So Azure Stack Edge is, a, um, is an AI, um, excuse me, it's an AI optimized edge computing appliance that you can order as a service from Azure and run it on the edge for scenarios such as where you need to get quick results from your data, right, right where the data happens. And we'd love to talk with you about, um, about a number of different scenarios, right? Do you want, do you have too much data to send to the cloud. Maybe you, have, maybe you have data that you can't send to the cloud and you need to get results. Maybe you have scenarios where you have safety or security or, uh, excuse me, or a, a number of scenarios where you want, uh, where you want quick results. Yep close to where the data happens without the latency of round tripping that data to the cloud. That's where edge compute comes yeah. in. Yeah. Okay, that's super interesting. So I always think about, when I think about the edge, that could be like factories where, where we have uh, things mm -hmm. deployed where I don't really want to rely on an internet connectivity, for example. Right, is that? Absolutely, absolutely right. So if you have scenarios where, if you have environments where you have low or poor or no bandwidth, and, um, or even where you need to run completely disconnected. So super excited, you might have seen, uh, you might have seen some of our announcements this week. Right? Azure Stack Edge is quite a new product, and some of you might know us as Databox Edge, yeah. is our previous name, and we are now part of the Azure Stack family. And, um, and we had a lot of announcements this week, including a ruggedized series, right? Which you can take out into the field scenarios like you might have seen in Jason Zander's keynote. My colleague Chris showed you about disaster response. Yeah. And, and using, um, using our ruggedized series out in the field where, where you can see real time, as, as the situation yep. changes in real time, you've got that compute running that's right with you. And so, yep. so those field teams can react as the situation happens, yep. right? As you see, as you can see live where people need help, where the situation is changing, and you're getting results right there with you, right? Yep. Or like you talked about, right, in a factory, where how could you improve your business if you could get results if you could get results about things that are uh, about anomalies on the line as that as that is happening, or someone's not right, wearing the right safety gear, yep. and you can send an alert, right? Yep. So many, uh, so many scenarios. Do you have any that you'd like to? I, I, I was like super interested yeah. in the disaster response thing. That when I saw the keynote and mm -hmm. we talked about that, I was like, wow, that's that's going to be great for help. That's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we talk a lot about that, about the ability to <coughs> bring those services and the, and the power of the Azure Cloud sort of out into the world, right? And so you can take those services, you can take them to, to where you want to be, and sometimes when you're out in the world, like, like we talked about, it's you're not in a data center anymore, and you have to be able to withstand lots of unexpected situations. Yeah. yeah. So today, as, as, we know, as you mentioned, it was like called Databox Edge. And I remember that the thing was what we could actually deploy on were containers mm -hmm. for the AI technology. Um, but you also said that there's new stuff coming. Yes. So what Absolutely. are the new things? Absolutely, yeah, very exciting. So a lot of new things are coming. So today, today Azure Stack Edge is uh, the Azure Stack Edge appliance that you can order. And let me, let me back up a little yep. bit and tell you just briefly. So you actually, you don't buy Azure Stack Edge. You order it as an Azure service, and it is completely cloud managed. So say you have a number of locations, right? Maybe you've got a number of retail stores or factory locations, or, uh, or you're in a city and you're, and, you're doing, and you're doing edge compute to learn information from traffic cameras all around the city at various locations. So you want to, if you're going to send appliances out, uh, out across all of your locations, you want to be able to centrally manage them where the IT experts are, where your DevOps experts are, um, back in a central location where you don't have to worry about each individual appliance, right? And then, so as you manage, I, uh, or excuse me, as you mentioned, right, IoT Edge is, our, is the compute platform that is already available today, and so anything that you can deploy in a Docker-compatible container, you can deploy on IoT Edge, so you can deploy it on Azure Stack Edge, oh. right? And then, as of this week, we've announced 
announced coming soon also support for Kubernetes. Yep. And, um, and that's going to be super cool as we are, you've probably heard about Azure Arc announcements, yep. right? An awesome Azure Arc for Kubernetes. When you use Kubernetes on Azure Stack Edge, we're going to automatically spin up a cluster of appliances for you, automatically connect it to Azure. So in just a few minutes, you're going to have a Kubernetes cluster and be able to deploy directly from the cloud at scale to all of your locations. Oh wow. Super okay. cool, end to end. You can go from pl actually plugging in an appliance to deploying applications to Kubernetes from the cloud in a few minutes. Oh wow, that's, Very that's cool. really cool. And then, you know, I think as you were starting to allude to, not all, of, not all of your applications may be containerized yet, right? So if you still have applications running in VMs, we're also working on VM support. Yeah. And so you'll be able to bring those applications to Azure Stack Edge also. Yeah, no, yeah. that sounds fantastic. That's yeah. really a great solution. And one of the best things about VMs is this context that we don't just talk about the power of the Azure cloud, that's the, the services that Azure provides, and the various, many Azure services have edge components so you can deploy down to the edge, like cognitive services, stream analytics, and like Azure Functions and others. But when you start talking about our partners too, like Azure has a rich set of partners that have a, you know, all these different applications and services, and the ability to have VMs running on the edge as well helps to sort of give them the opportunity to kind of deploy down to the edge as well. So when I talked about disaster response, that was with our partner Esri, right, that has functionality that can deploy out. And they do have some containerized functionality, but a lot of their software is still in virtual machines. And so their ability to sort of work with Azure Stack Edge as a platform is much, is aided greatly by having virtual machines. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just thinking about the scenario, and you probably like know it better than me, but I, I was just thinking about like stores where you have, like today, they run probably a couple of virtual machines yeah. on a single server, and they would like to modernize that and probably do some more, more things with like AI and things yeah. like that and start using like the application in Docker managed environment or Docker containers for that. But they still need that like legacy system somehow. It's still there, right? Exactly, and, exactly, yes. And that, that I think is a great uh, capability yeah. there. And with Azure Stack Edge, they can do both at the same time. Yeah. Yep. So they can buy some Azure Stack Edge devices, they could put them in a, in a sort of, they could cluster them together, right, which is another thing we talked about coming soon this week. And then they could run a Kubernetes cluster, a Kubernetes cluster across those devices for their containerized applications, and they could run VMs across that cluster for their legacy applications. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the great thing that you can just manage that using, as you said, Azure Arc. Yes. That's going to be right. like a great And story. then you manage Super the underlying story. host and all those devices from the Azure portal, so you're just all set to yeah. go. Okay. Absolutely, so it's end-to-end -end, end -end supported experience, right? So you have hardware is supported as part of a service, yep. your Kubernetes cluster is supported, your, um, right, is, is supported, and your container, and your container lifecycle is then supported by Azure Arc. Awesome. So, so yeah. So let's talk a little bit, and you just brought it up, let's yeah. talk a little bit about hardware. You already mentioned that and one of the new things you announced was clustering, right? I can now have multiples of those boxes Coming clustered soon. together. Coming yes. soon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but that's, that's what the plan is, right? Yes. What you announced. And um, so what else is there? You also mentioned a couple of times now that this is an Azure service. Yes. So what does that mean? Um, yeah, absolutely. So what that means is that you don't, uh, that what it means is it's really easy to get started with edge compute, right? Because you don't buy anything. You, you don't have to buy anything up front. You go to the portal and create, a, and create a new Azure Stack Edge resource, just like you're creating any new resource in Azure. You're subscribing to a service, and we ship you the appliance as part of the service. There's no minimum commitment, so you can take and grab it, try it out. If it works for you, that's awesome, and you order for all of your locations. And if it doesn't or it doesn't work for this, you can send it back and you stop getting billed for it. It just gets billed on your monthly account. But what that also means is it's centrally managed from the cloud, right? Because at your edge locations, think about it, are, are there IT experts at all, your, at all of your edge yep. locations, right? If you are, think about it, um, grocery store locations, right? Who's doing IT in a grocery store? Um, if, you're, if you're deploying to factories or out in the field in a number of different areas, you want to have, you want to have the heavy lifting really for your for your application deployments and um, being able to be handled by your experts back in that in that central IT location. Yeah. And so cloud management gives you that capability both for and now with Arc that's going to be both for the Azure Stack Edge service for the product for the appliance. Yeah. And then for your workloads, you you have cloud management, central cloud management through IoT through all of your platforms through IoT Edge, through Kubernetes, through VMs. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. And and so as you were. Um, 
you as well, right? We mentioned the Rugged Eye series that, um, that we announced. We also announced, um, coming soon, a new GPU version. So today, the Azure Stack Edge hardware has an FPGA on board, and that's uh, Intel ARIA 10 FPGA on board for accelerated machine learning with a number of Azure machine learning and cognitive services models. And then we are also going to be releasing a new version with NVIDIA T4 GPUs okay. for a broad range of accelerated ML at the edge. Yes. And then, and then you can go a step further, and if you cluster, so if you cluster a group of Azure Stack Edge appliances, you're, you can, have workloads running at the edge that are super powerful, right? Because yeah. you can be you can be scaling those compute workloads across a cluster of GPUs or FPGAs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is one of the core premises of the device. I and mean, we talk about, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking about like all the different ways you can deploy compute workloads down there. And you know, legacy VMs and you can imagine line of business apps and things like that. But one of the key values is the reason why you're running things out at the edge is that's where your data is getting generated. That's where your video cameras are. That's where your sensors are. Right. And, the, and the things that are really good at understanding all that data that's getting generated is artificial intelligence techniques, right? And AI and ML. And so one of the core values of the device is that it has hardware acceleration built into it for those techniques. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we have an FPGA. That's why we bring in the GPU to the device. That all of, all of those different form factors that we talked about have hardware acceleration built in, so that when you're deploying these new workloads down to the device that are designed to sort of reason across all that data that's getting generated, you don't know what to do with today, because it's just sort of like coming in and you have to like drop it on the floor because you sent it all to the cloud, right? You can do this machine learning techniques across all of it to kind of get insights about what you need, and then those insights can either go directly to things that are also at your site, right? Like, yep. turn that machine off right now, right? It's going to yep. break. Or they can just go back up to the cloud, right? So instead of getting the video, you're getting the metadata from the video. You're getting the things that happened, and they go back up to the cloud, and then you can view them in a cloud dashboard across all your locations. Okay, so that is how I get like the additional benefit, not just having like very powerful hardware and AI and managed from the cloud, but I can also send off the data for long term or like just to keep that like to the cloud as well. Yeah, absolutely, and one of the things built into Azure Stack Edge is a storage gateway so that it makes it very easy to move those pieces of data up to the cloud. So either all of your data or the pieces that you find are really interesting after you analyze it with, with the machine learning techniques, right? So imagine you have you know, a, a video of traffic, right? And you don't want to save like 24 hours, seven days a week of like traffic going by, but if you detect there was an accident, or maybe perhaps you detect there was almost an accident, yeah. right? You just save a couple minutes of video for that, and then you can go and you can look at that, and you can try to improve the safety of that intersection by determining, by just analyzing those almost misses that you never would know about otherwise. Yeah. No, it's just impressive how far we have come with that technology, right? And being able Huge, to basically yeah. like do things like this on the edge um, is just for me like is insane, right? We're taking really the power we have in the cloud for a long time and delivering that really at there where we need it, right? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. exactly. Uh. So what else is new? And uh, do you have anything else you want to talk about like for the announcements you had this week? One of the things I really want to yeah. highlight is the Azure Cognitive Services tools. Because we talk a lot about you know, running AI and ML out at the edge on your own. And, and we know that like, there's a lot of people that are working on training AI and, AI and ML models, but like, it takes work and energy to train those and make them work. But it, what Azure Cognitive Services does is it gives you pre-trained models that you can just it's, it's very easy to get up and running with them. Yeah. And you can deploy those down to the edge and you can run them there. It's like many of the demos that we built, we just get a cognitive services module yeah. and run it locally and we don't have to do all our own training. We can just kind of like start to analyze our data right away. And that gets us started. And then if you want to do more specialized analysis, then you start training your own model. So I think that idea of those cognitive services modules that can run out on these edge platforms is a really great way to kind of get started and to get going with these solutions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think you know to um, to take that actually to take that a step further and sort of for, for a couple of examples. One of my favorite examples. I'm actually going to steal one of yours, Chris. But um, one of my favorite examples is how if you think about in a city, right? If you're when you're driving, you see traffic cameras everywhere, right? So if you think about what can you do, the question that we that we always ask, right, is what can you do with the data? What more could you be doing with the data that's available to you? Right, so traffic cameras are out there to look for traffic infractions, right, but what else could they be learning from that data? Well, you've also got, so if, if a city has, say, 500 to a, or 1,000 traffic cameras around, they're capturing video 24-7, yep. right? Not all of that data is interesting. Yep. 
But what if you could run ML at the edge and you can use a cognitive services model for this and you could detect you could detect locations that have collisions or near collisions frequently. Yep. And you could capture just that data to help improve traffic patterns and also filter out to just the informa inf interesting information to help you get to the next step. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, really, really quickly, mm -hmm. if I want to get started and know more about Azure Stack Edge, where do I go? Yeah. Um, so, um, you can go to aka.ms um, slash Azure Stack Edge. Okay, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. So, people, uh, aka.ms, um, that's where we go, that slash hashtag edge. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's where you go if you want to know yeah. more. Thank you very much, Chris. Great. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Thank you so much. And so um, nice. hopefully see you soon in the Expo Hall. Yeah, have a great conference. That's great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So, we had an amazing day of stories from our community reporters, and I'm confident that Martin will continue uh, that trend now. So, take it away, Martin. <laughs>